welcome to Field Sports Britain. Coming up, we're here in Scotland with a hotshot American hunter to try for a McNabb. We're learning top gun dog training tips with Skinner's Pet Foods. First, we're shooting Spanish partridge in Suffolk. These are not just any game birds, these are Spanish red-legged partridge and we're in Suffolk to discover why they are over here and if they are any better than the French red-legged partridge we know and love. In fact, the day has an altogether continental feel, even though the shoot is congregating in an East Anglian pub car park. We're going to hear about tips and techniques and highs and lows of British driven shooting with gun importer Edward King. My, my loader puts some Chanel lipstick into the gun. It's just as effective against partridges the way I shoot. <laughs> His company Anglo-Spanish Imports supplies the UK with AYAs and Rosinis. Quite a nice little gun with English colour hardening, self-opener, nice bit of wood. Let's see what it does. Edward is also going to be our translator for the day. Te te mandan 300 platos, 300 platos por encima. The Spanish company that supplied the shoot with 8,000 16-week-old pults want to see what the guns think. It's an interesting concept, but we need to see these birds fly. We had an interesting conversation with Pachi, who's very kindly reared and donated the partridges, or many of the partridges for today. Um, he has a very strong philosophy of reintroducing a partridge which will actually naturalise itself into the area and breed and he has very high hopes for next spring and, uh, and the breeding success, which of course is I think something that we all need to be looking at really for the future of shooting, because it's very easy to just rear and shoot, but from an ecological point of view we need to be looking at what we leave behind as a legacy and if we can have uh, a resident and, and reproducing partridge species here, it can only be a good thing for shooting generally. Great drive to open on. It's a nice little pile of cartridges as well. I noticed the whole cartridge company cartridges are very effective at this kind of shooting. Good clean kills. The drive is indeed fast and furious and any bird that is beyond Edward's reach is clearly one of the Spanish variety. I think without a doubt the side by side on this drive was great because Good girl. Now, go on, get back up there. Uh, just the sheer handling characteristics. It's a nice light gun, shortish barrels, um, uh, and very easy to move around, very, very quick. Good girl, bring it on, bring it on. Bring it on. Good girl, good girl. Now, go on, get back. You wouldn't believe that that dog, two seasons ago, was gun shy and couldn't retrieve. Steady. Oh, well, that's the last we'll see of her. <laughs> so we know which are which. The imported birds are marked with a small blue tag, but up close, it is easy to see the difference. Edward gets boss man Pachi to talk us through it. Pachi here is, is explaining that one of the big differences between, uh, visual differences between the, the two birds, as far as the plumage is concerned, is that the white and black and brown stripes, bars, on these feathers here uh, is much more distinct and definite on the Spanish bird than it is on the English bird where the colors bleed into each other slightly more and so you get less definition on these lateral feathers and the, 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 the color of the of the legs obviously is is is, is a, a, a purer red uh, and that is despite the fact that these have actually been released for, for, for longer than the, uh, the, the visiting birds. Pachi and his family are the largest breeders of partridge in Spain and are looking at expanding their markets. Javier operates shoots back in Spain and has been instrumental in getting the birds over here. He thinks they're going to be a shrewd investment. They are granddaughters, let's say, of 
wild partridge capturing in Spain. So they kept a lot the instinct of surviving, of eating in the, in the field. So, and that is a thing that it, it has to be good for flying, for, for, for getting along with the, with the predators, well, getting aware of them. So I think for them it's going to be easy to get along with, the, with this English ground. And we already have two days of drives and they're, they're, they're flying very well. So people are a little bit, well, I, they seem to be impressive about the, the quality of birds. With the first drive firing everyone up, Edward shows us how to speed load a side by side. Another little trick is the famous spare cartridges in the left hand, just held there like that. They're not in the way because they're incredibly useful when you find your first two shots to just pop them in to the chambers and it gives you just that little bit of edge and speed. It takes a bit of getting used to to start with but once, once you've, you've been doing it for a while you hardly, hardly even notice they're there. The only thing not to do is after lunch to have a cigar in the same place because that doesn't fit into a 20 ball chamber. He's so English for a Spaniard. It's about fast fingers and not butter fingers, which is why he's sporting a smart pair of gloves, as he wouldn't want them burning on hot barrels. There's nothing worse, even if you're not on a big day, there's nothing worse than getting the drive of your dreams when suddenly you finally draw the peg and you're in the right place at the right time and the birds are screaming over you and it's all falling into place and all of a sudden your barrels get so hot you can't keep shooting. And that's an absolute tragedy on any day. Well done. Well done. Well done. At the end of the drive, maple Good works girl. well. Time for sausage and a slowgasm. What a combination. With just two drives left, Edward gives our Spanish friend a go with the Spanish AYA while he takes out the over and under Rizzini. This new model is a development really of the old model. It's got a game scene engraving on both sides. So you have grass on this side. I'll just turn it over for you there. See some rather elegant little partridges. On the other side, um, selected walnut, which is nicely oil finished to a decent lustre. And of course the RB is finished all in wood without, without a heel plate. Things are about to happen now, so I'm gonna get cracking. So which gun is the best for this kind of shooting? When you're shooting partridges in this sort of environment, which is very quick, they're upon you before you really know it, um, you need a gun that's, that, that, that is light and very quick to point. Um, so we'll see how this one is compared to the AYA side by side this morning. You're going to be honest with me? I will be honest with everyone. Honesty is my middle name. Honesty is always the best policy, which is what we want from the shoot's gamekeeper. He's the person who has been monitoring these Spanish birds more than anyone and ultimately he'll decide if they're going to be worth bringing in next season. They're a different bird in the way that they act. They definitely fly better um, and they're wilder and whether, from my point of view, we'll be able to do anything with them later on in the season, right, time will tell. Everything else, the way they were transported, the way they arrived, um, Everything else has been second to none, I've got to say, from my experience. The last drive should be a good one. Once again, the Spaniards are flying high. Patchy's wife is confident the birds will do well. A lot of it is due to Spanish flair and passion. We have the capacity of breeding four million birds. That's, uh, yeah, it's our main business uh, and it's a family business. And as again, Patchy started 30 years ago. So, as a passion, again, I think if you don't really like what you're doing, it's very difficult to do it well. So, a cracking day on the partridge. The Spanish birds and guns performed beautifully. For more about the partridges, email Javier at this address. For more on the AYA and the Rosini, visit Edward's website, asi.co.uk. Now, in this film, Edward is sporting smart Gripswell shooting gloves worth nearly £70. If you go to our Facebook page, you have a chance of winning a pair. All you need to do is come up with a caption for this photograph taken at the shoot. I should say, keep it clean, but there's really no point. Good luck, and the winner will be announced on Facebook on Friday the 11th of October 2013. 
Well, ole. Now it's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Britain News. Brazil's 2016 Olympians could be Amazonian, literally. Talent scouts are going native, searching jungle tribes for archers and kayakers capable of winning gold at Rio 2016. The tribal archers can shoot birds in flight at up to 100 metres, and the skilled kayakers and canoeists too. An American TV host has had his series cancelled after he shot an elephant. Under Wild Skies is a hunting show sponsored by the National Rifle Association. NRA lobbyist Tony Macris shot the elephant twice in the face and then compared his critics to Hitler. A Causes.com petition asking NBC to drop the show generated support from more than 100,000 people in five days. It's bad news for the Antis, but good news for the Dubarry Boot Company. The sister of the Duchess of Cambridge is in the headlines this week after this picture of her and a group of friends appeared on Twitter and she's wearing Dubarry boots. She's also enjoying a 50 bird shoot with her friends near Edinburgh. Now, if you're in Ireland this weekend, you can catch up with our own Mark Gilchrist, who's helping to raise support for Eddie Downey, a country sports campaigner who's running for president of the Irish Farmers Association. The event in Slane, County Meath, sounds like it could be an evening to remember. The BBC's Country File magazine, seeking gifts for the Christmas gift guide, has approached the Countryside Alliance. It then went cold turkey and turned down an ad for the CA's online shop and Countrywise Marketplace, allegedly because of the group's involvement in political lobbying. Now, do you want to win £15,000 and a 10-day trip to the Kruger National Park in South Africa? There's a new competition to design an unmanned aerial drone that can track rhino poachers. You can only spend up to £2,000 on equipment and software. For details, visit wcuavc.com. This film shows one of the entrants, Alia Pandolfi. And finally, you have to respect this angler's commitment to catch and release. After reeling in a 300-pound bull shark, fishermen in Florida removed the hook from the shark's mouth and released it back into the ocean. When it failed to swim away immediately, a courageous fisherman jumped into the water to help revive it. Bull sharks are considered one of the world's most likely to attack humans. You are now up to date with Field Sports Britain News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Now we're off to see what you lot are up to. It's Hello Charlie. Here's what the world's up to this week. Hello, Charlie. Gilly here. Small night on the rabbits. 122 picks. Literally bodies everywhere, mate. Hello, Charlie. It's Nick Rudisol. I'm just out here setting up a tree stand, and I found that honey. Uh, natural beehive which I thought was kind of cool. Hello Charlie, greetings from Sporting Shooter HQ. Just wanted to let you know that our 10th birthday issue is on sale in the shops now, and in it we're giving away 10 amazing prizes. We've got a Wesley shotgun, a Dave Driven pleasant shooting, we've got a digital gun safe, Harkeela boots, a thousand game ball cartridges, lots more, all free to enter, details are in the magazine. Pick it up, buy it now, enter, win. Send us your own Hello Charlie, film yourself on your mobile phone, just a sentence saying Hello Charlie, who you are and what you're up to. Then share it or email it via YouTube, Facebook, Dropbox or you send it, you name it, to charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Jason Bruce is the star of Headhunter Chronicles and he's been over in Scotland to try for a stag, a salmon and a grouse. original McNabb was three people taking a salmon and two stags from three different estates. Nearly a century after the author John Buchan brought out his famous book John McNabb, it has transmogrified into a stag, a salmon and a grouse or two in a single day on a single estate. Snog the cook too and that's a royal. And we can't possibly say what an imperial is. To be honest, we're pretty good at them. We haven't failed yet, be it in Ireland with the ONAB or travelling the length of the UK in the Ferrari McNab. Today we are out in Scotland with our American friend Jason Bruce. He's the star of the series Headhunter Chronicles on US TV. However, this time we're taking a back seat. 
casual onlookers as Jason's cameraman Cody tries to get the money shots and harassed sporting agent Lackey Smith from Invernessshire tries to make the whole thing happen. My expectations on the McNabb is uh, hopefully we're going to pull this red stag off this morning and then get to fishing. I heard that the salmon is going to be the really tough one and then we'll get our grouse. So it's, uh, so it's going to be a lot of action in one day. I'm sure he's going to be pretty, pretty skilled at making the shot. I trust him. I'm going to be over his shoulder, so I'll have the shot. Right I'll have it right, right here. Right here. I'm pumped. First stop is a stag, high in the hills above the Bewley River. Richard Smith is the stalker here, Lackey's man on the ground. The stags are thinking about rushing and are moving from one side of the valley to the other. You hear that? We just got to find him now. Normally, stalking takes place on the hill, but Lackey and Richard reckon now is a good time to ambush a stag crossing the glen. But it's not easy. Whatever the stags were doing yesterday, they are not doing it today. We're, we're better at utilising the time. We've got you know, mm -hmm. less to date to scratch from anything about a stag, but we get a call later on. You give me a call when you get in. Mm -hmm. When the action takes place, yes, it takes place fast, and we're the wrong end of the glen. By the time we get there, Jason has shot his beast. I'm glad I don't have to explain to editor David why there's a dead deer, but no shot deer. Two years ago, he'd have been a heavier rack than that. Rack, that's American. He is American. <laughs> <laughs> and you noticed. You can call it a trophy if you want to be European, or the heed if you want to be Scottish. <laughs> Hey Jason, you're going to need all the help you can get today. Here we go, a little, little bit of that down. Should do the trick. What Cheers. do we have? Cheers. We've got Tomatin. Tomatin. 12 year old. Good luck. <laughs> that's better, what we need. Better than breakfast, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to need it for the salmon. Aye, that's it. Because I didn't tell you I'm not much of a fisherman. No. <laughs> <laughs> Jason's relief is palpable. First of the three he wants is done, and it's still not even 9am. We've done as much as we can to help Jason with his trip. It's a bit like an exchange trip at school. He sorts us out with coyote and bear in the States, and we show him a good time here. It's fascinating to talk about the differences in hunting culture. He's a hunting TV star available on cable, endorsed by possibly the biggest name in global hunting, Jim Shockey. Jason is an amazing hunter. I, you know, I bump into him or his footprints in some of the strangest corners of the world, like literally right on the border with uh, Afghanistan in Iran. You know, Jason is a fearless, fearless hunter. He's the real deal, and I have a ton of respect for him. So Jason's got a stag in the bag. All we need now is a fish on a dish, and we seem to have arrived at a canal. Luckily, there's a river just behind it. There is no rest on a McNabb day, so off we go to what Lackey reckons will be the trickiest uh, bit, the salmon. We know Lackey is worried about achieving it all in a day, but what about Jason and his cameraman? Failure on any of these quarry could ruin the whole production. That's a, that's a pretty good fly you got there. Yeah, it's not really a fly, but it's uh, kind of a rainbow looking lure. And I'm uh, not sure really the technique. I've actually caught salmon before in the state of Washington, and we actually drifted a, in a drift boat pretty much new to me, so any type of fishing is kind of sort of new to me. We're going to get you spay casting before the end of the day. <laughs> yeah, that's what they said. We're going to actually fly fish for a couple hours and then go to the spinning rig. Yeah. The River Ness flows out of the bottom of Loch Ness. It's normally a productive river. There are fish here, but the water is low. Jason tries fly fishing, but, well, he's American, so don't shoot him. He reverts to the Toby Spoon. Generally the salmon would be considered the harder to get of those three. Um, we had 10 fish here last week, you know, so there is every chance he will get a salmon. I'm going to do my best to try and get him a salmon. Uh, as I say, there's no guarantee in it, but I think what you've done, you've gone out, you've got a stag this morning, uh, come in here, get a couple hours fishing in here. If we get a, if we get a salmon, then the grouse is probably the easiest to get out of those three, so yeah, it looks like you're, you're going with a good chance anyway. No joy on the fish front for Jason yet, so we're going to take a break from casting and try for grouse. We've arranged to meet a dog handler and a beater on a moor in the Monatliat Hills. Today it's a wirehead Vizsla that's working. Have you shot over these dogs before? Not that kind of dog. Never over some English pointers and then over German short air pointers. We spot the grouse on the ground and Jason connects. 
takes the pressure off now if I can just teach Jason how to catch fish. I don't know how that's going to happen, but I can't even catch fish, so. Let's go fishing. <laughs> if we can't catch a fish tonight, uh, Blackie's buying fish and chips in town. Hopefully we don't get kicked out. We got kicked out of like three restaurants last night. Got called redneck at the bar. So. <laughs> Thank you, Charlie, for reminding me of this. I'm very grateful to you. I'm sure we'll get a fish. Come on, let's go. Let's do it. Well, that's a very relieved uh, American hunting star there, and probably an even more relieved production bloke. That's a, a grouse on the floor of a windy moor, and we've got a stag, as I say, in the bag. Just one more thing to go. It's the fish! It's back to the river Ness. The fish we want doesn't have to be huge. A Loch Ness tiddler will do. Quite a number of the people who do want to do a McNabb aren't ardent fishers. And that, that in itself is a big ask, because if you came here purely to salmon fish, you wouldn't really just expect you're going to roll up on day one, ten minutes later catch a salmon. So, you know, it is a big ask, but it is possible, you it, know? It is possible. It's about making it as possible as you can. Well, it? that's yeah. it. And, and, you know, at the end of the day, Mother Nature's got the last ten percent on the argument, whatever we all try and do. Jason catches a trout. He hooks and loses a salmon. Finally, he hooks a fish and the ghillie releases it so quickly we don't capture it on film. Cody does, however, so you'll have to wait until the middle of 2014 to see it. Jason Salmon may have been on a spinner rather than the more traditional fly, but that's owing to conditions. The lovely thing about a McNabb is you can make it up as you go along. You will be able to see this episode of Jason's Headhunter Chronicles Series 5 on Sportsman Channel in July 2014, and you can be kept posted by visiting headhunterchronicles.com. However, for 2013 we can announce that Jason is allowing us to run his previous adventures on Field Sports Channel, so stay tuned. And finally, for a McNabb week of your very own, drop Lackey Smith an email, ls at highlandsporting.com. Now let's find out what's up in the week ahead. It's the map that matters. Calendar. It's this week's calendar with dates for your diary, smartphone, tablet or notepad. So what's coming up in the world of field sports in the coming week, beginning the 9th of October 2013? Many of the stag and buck seasons are drawing to a close, but hinds and does are about to start. We're at the start of the two-month window when all the UK game bird seasons are underway. If you're wild fowling, you might like to know that the moon is waxing crescent, heading for half on the 12th of October and a full a week later on the 19th. The unseasonably warm weather will give way to rain, but when is anyone's guess? The low pressure is parked on top of Iceland and the high refuses to budge from over the Azores. The only accurate prediction is that October will remain, if not as warm as it started, at least mellow and fruitful. Now for what's on around the UK. Basque events are full of practice days at playgrounds and ranges this week. There is a simulated pheasant flush on offer at Faux de Glas shooting ground in Wales on Friday the 11th October 2013. Doveridge Clay Sports Club in Derbyshire is hosting an introduction to wood pigeon shooting on Saturday. On Sunday there is a Basque range day at Bisley in Surrey. On Monday Southwest Lady Guns are honing their skills at Barbary Shooting School in Wiltshire. For more, visit basque.org.uk and click on the events tab. The Skinner's Gun Dog Training Team are back. Let's see how to get your dog in tune for the shooting season. Fences and walls are not just barriers for livestock, they can also stop your dog in its tracks. So how do you train your dog to jump safely, with confidence, and when is it old enough to start? I like a dog to be over 12 months, its bones are formed. We start with a very low fence, building up to a high one, never barbed wire. I don't like dogs going, it, accidents happen, they're out on a bird, they won't stop at a barbed wire fence and they jump it. The more you get your dogs jumping, the more confident the dog will, will jump. You're much better to have a confident dog than one that's not sure. They're the ones that always get caught up. Today the fencing we used has got rabbit netting on it to make the, the fences safe so a dog can't drop a leg down it. I start off taking my dog to the fence, a nice low one we've got, on a lead, Command the dog to go over, again, it doesn't matter what your command is, to jump over, I just use the dog's name or the command if I'm doing it on a dummy left, right and back, 
encourage it over. If it won't go, you get over the fence, call your dog over, and you can assist it with the lead. I don't mean dragging it over, but try and encourage it over with the lead. Then, once you've got it going over on the lead, you can go to a higher fence, which we're using today. Stand off the fence, throw the dog the dummy, send it, give it all the encouragement it needs. Tom runs West Halligan Dogs near Perth in Scotland. Visit westhalligandogs.co.uk. This series on gun dog training tips is brought to you by Skinner's Pet Foods, maker of the field and trial range of gun dog feeds. Visit skinnerspetfoods.co.uk. Well, we've got lots of other Skinner's gun dog training tips. If you want to see any of them, click on the screen that's magically appeared up there behind me. Now, the wider world of hunting, shooting and fishing on YouTube, it is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting, shooting and fishing videos that YouTube has to offer. The phenomenon that is Ducks Unlimited does it again. It is promoting waterfowl360.com, an online resource for waterfowl hunters. With US duck populations at high levels, the website maps the birds' migration south, as well as waterfowling tips and tactics, gear features, wild game recipes, retriever training lessons, shotgunning instruction and bird identification. In the Caribbean, the government of Trinidad and Tobago has banned hunting until 2015 for what it calls preservation reasons, the last time these Caribbean islands Islands held a moratorium on hunting, large sections of the forest were overtaken by marijuana cultivators. So here is one of the hunting YouTubers of Trinidad, Bitsy Singh is after agoutis and a hollow tree trunk. Cyber Druid, the mod god is an early YouTuber who puts up a combination of home improvement and home defence videos. Recently he has turned his attentions to catapults or slingshots made rather beautifully from sculpted acrylic. Onto the world of fishing and the lovely autumn colours reflected in English rivers as the season draws to a close, do not stop Jonathan Barnes from getting the phrase gin clear into the opening sentence of his report on fly fishing for trout in a North Country chalk stream. Jonathan's videos on YouTube are one reason you won't have to buy another fishing DVD. On the other side of the world, the 2013 trout fishing season begins in New Zealand. Hundreds of anglers take to the waters of Lake Tarawera near Rotorua. Beautiful weather greets them as they venture out onto the lake before sunrise along with a film crew from the New Zealand Herald which files this report. Our Toby sends me his film about shooting pigeons over decoys in the Netherlands. Four guys, four guns, plenty of birds. Who says that just because their government tries to ban it, the Dutch don't like shooting. Pigeons Shakari is a fan of R. Tobies and he has a channel with this film of two pigeons falling down to one shot. Incredible! And finally, if you like military weapons, the biggest gun channel, Collab, as we gnarly YouTubers call it, took place recently in Georgia, USA. Iraq veteran 8888 hosted YouTube shoot of 2013 where participants romped their way through a reported one million US dollars worth of ammunition supplied by gun trade giant ATK. A million bucks, good rumour, well started. Loads of top US gun channels are there and most make a film about the day. Here's a good one from Military Arms Channel. You can click on any of these films to watch them if you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top 8, send it in via YouTube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well if you like those videos you'll probably like Schools Challenge TV. It's all the fun of a mini game fair at the Oxford Gun Company Open Day. The Schools Challenge regulars are shooting it out on the sporting layout. <laughs> they are trying air gunning, archery, falconry and looking at some of the many trade stands that come to this popular autumn event. Watch one of the best ways to spend an English autumn afternoon. Click on the screen to see this week's Schools Challenge TV. Well, we are back next week, and if you're watching this on YouTube, please don't hesitate to hit the subscribe button that's somewhere around the outside of the screen, or go to our webpage, fieldsportschannel.tv, click to like us on Facebook, or follow us on Twitter. This has been Field Sports Britain.